we are now ready to use a robotic arm so look for cell setup and mine is right here it's a really old looking icon in order to use a robotic arm you have to set up the robotic arm cell for every different application that you're using so um, I'm gonna give an example one I want you to do this one with me click new and we have the ER4U that's the robotic arm we have in the milling room click OK remember you can pause this at any time if you need to catch up now the first thing we're gonna do is um, click on general and we're gonna add a table so I'm double clicking on table and we'll make it a yellow table that's fine click OK and then place it and so I just clicked and placed it here I'm gonna right click and move the mouse up that zooms in so you can see the controls here if I pull this it pans it down it's kinda nice to be able to see it a little bit more isometric we are now going to add the robot so I click robot I double click ER4U if you look in the milling room we actually do have a um, slide base on ours we're gonna put one without the slide base we're not gonna have it slide from left to right not yet there will be a program where you do that so we added it to the table there it is and I'm gonna add a material I'm gonna add a cube so I double click cube I'm gonna change the color of mine uh, click color I'm gonna change mine to, to green uh, I just find that green and yellow really go well together um, you probably would agree with that well, let me place that right there so I place mine a little bit off center it doesn't really matter where you place it um, you can do the same basic exercise with this so we're done with this I'm gonna click file save this as and I have a few names in here because I just practiced this whole thing let's call this um, I'm gonna call it Brian practice cell setup and I save this in my folder so you probably would want to create a folder for RoboCell that's the name of the or you could call it cell setup as long as you can find it and I'm gonna save it there so now it is saved now I actually quit this program and I'm gonna open up RoboCell so here it is and we do a new program first so click the new tab here and now I'm going to do file and import a 3D model I'm gonna import the cell setup that I made and that was Brian practice cell setup so I'm gonna open that and there it is now my windows are all messed up and it's kind of a pain so I'm gonna to go to window and click simulation and teach that puts everything neatly in their places at this point I'm gonna demo for you a little bit of how to um, move the robotic arm so this is exactly like the one we have in the other room um, these are the commands that you're gonna end up using let's see let's get this window to show up in front here there we go so I, I kinda had to click on this one first and then over to here to get it to show up let's expand this we're gonna go to commands and I'm gonna open all of them up so you can see them right now I don't have a whole lot of options and um, this is okay this is on L1 introductory then we have advanced and then we have professional if you click professional um, you can see there is a boatload of other options here uh, and that's okay you are a professional so that's what we're gonna have it set at so the first thing that I'm gonna have you do is I, um, the same thing you are do for every single one of these we're gonna add some remarks so remarks are RE so if you and this is all your your keyboard shortcut commands it's RE so if I click over here and I press the keys RE then it says what do you want to write so I'm gonna say that this is um, practice one enter key and then there this is my line of code this is just like your um, CNC code line just one line at a time or writing code I'm gonna put another remark RE and now I'm gonna put my name and hit enter another remark and I'm gonna add the class period period five or six depending on who's watching this and I'll do one more remark up with the date just because I can and I actually want you to have these for every single one of them so the first remark is gonna be the actual activity number and then your name and then the class period and then the date so we have set up a program and it will not read any of these these are like the green double slashes uh, I'm gonna sneeze I'm gonna pause it oh boy I did definitely just sneeze all right so let's go back to this thing we are uh, let's write a little program that just opens this little gripper and then closes it so right now OG is open gripper so I'm gonna click back to program window and I'm gonna type OG and it just says open gripper there isn't that delicious now 
I need to put a wait time in here because if I just do open gripper and then close gripper, it happens instantly. So let's look for wait. Wait is WT down here. So I wonder what happens if I double click that. I wonder if it'll put it up there. I'm going to say 20 tenths of a second. That means two seconds. Oh, look at that. It puts it up there. So you have two options. Uh, now we're going to close the gripper. So close gripper is CG. I'm going to click over here. You have to make sure you click in the active window, CG. And now let's see what happens. So let me change my window back to simulation and teach. Kind of tuck that back in there. And I need to start on the first line of my code. So I, code, so I click 1. And this will run the code repeatedly, continuously. This runs it a single line at a time. And this runs one cycle, the entire code through once. So let's run it continuously. Oh, what is going on? Do you see that? It's pretty awesome. So I'm going to scroll this. I'm going to pan a little bit. Zoom in. It's open and then it flashes closed because I didn't put a wait time down here. So let's stop that and let's go to line 8. Hit WT for wait. And I'll wait 10 tenths of a second or one second. If I run this continuously, nothing happens because I'm starting on line 9. So now I'm going to go, go up to line 5. People are making fun of me out of my office. And I'm going to run continuously. So now it's open for 2 seconds, close for 1. Open for 2, close for 1. Yay, that's really exciting. So we'll stop that. That's pretty cool. Um, we're now going to teach a positions. So now that you know how to open and close gripper, I'm going to press the delete key. It's right above all the arrow keys. I'm going to hit delete. Oops, my window wasn't open. Got to click on that window. Hit delete. And that's how you get rid of them. Backspace does not work. You have to hit the delete key. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this arm and we're going to pick up this block and we're going to slide it over. So let's teach positions. You have to teach it. Whenever it's at the original position right here, that's called position 99. And you'll see that in the first activity. So I'm going to type 99 down here and teach positions. And then if I click this key here, record position, it now knows that position 99 is there. And it shows up in my positions. Let's change manual movement to XYZ so that this arm moves in the XYZ coordinates rather than by the joints. This joint, this joint, and this joint, and then the, the arm joint here. A little bit easier to control. So let's move it in the X direction, which is actually forward in this case. It's, it's kind of different from the milling machine. So if it X1, now speed is set to 5. I'm going to turn it to 10 because I'm not very patient. So I'm moving it back and forth. Z moves it down. And Y moves a couple joints at a time. It's kind of cool. Um, it's got to extend it out as it moves it over to move in the Y direction. So you can see it extends it out. Now the error means that we have passed the limit of this robot. It won't go any further than that. That's its work envelope, just like what you looked at in the uh, the PowerPoint and the worksheet that we did prior to this. So click OK. All right, so that's past the work plan, but that's OK. I don't need to go that far. So we'll go down in the Z, and I need to kind of adjust my position here. Let's go down in the Z a little bit more. I'm going to go back in the Y. Whoops, the wrong way. Go back in the Y. And it looks like I need to sort of tilt the hand. So I tilted that. Now it's, that, that looks pretty vertical on there. I need to go forward a little bit. So you're going to have to kind of play with the positioning to get it where you want it. And whoops. And uh, right there we go. Now I'm going to record this position here because it's just above the block. So if position 1 is on top of the block, position 1-1 one, one, or 11 is above the block. So I'm going to teach this as position 11. And we click teach. And now I'm going to go down. And that's position 1. And the reason is a single digit is is plane 1 or level 1. 11 is level 2. 21 is level 3. 31 is level 4. So if you have to stack blocks, it helps you know where you're going. 0, 1, or 1 is the original level, 1, 1 is above it, 2, 1 is above that, 3, 1 is above that, and so on. So we have, have we taught that one? Yeah, we taught 11, and, but I didn't teach position 1, so 1 is the ground level. So I go to position number, I click 1, and I hit teach. So now I've taught 1, 11, and 99. Now I'm going to lift it up, 
and I'm gonna move it over. Oops, wrong way. And I'm gonna go to here, and I'm gonna teach this as position 22 because position two is down here. So 22, or sorry, 12. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. 12 is here. So we'll teach that. And if we go all the way down, that's position two. So again, position two, then 12 would be above that, 22 above that, 32 above that. So we've taught everything. So now let's go back. So I'm going to type in um, 99. And then this key over here says go to that position. So it's going to go to position 99. Good. So now I'm going to write some code. I want it to let's hit commands. And I want it to go to the position and it actually is better to just go to position because then it follows the natural arc of the machine. If you do linear it will go in a straight line to that position and at times um, you could you could bind up the machine and you'll get an error. You Either GP or GL could work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do GP in this one. So we're going to go to position and we want to go to position 11 which is just above the block and I'm going to do it by joint and I'm going to do a speed of 5. That is a safe speed, 5. So we'll click OK. Now we're going to go to position 1 which is right on the block, joint at a speed of 5. And let me, let me change this one. Um, if you're going to a point above a block, you can actually go fast. So I'm going to make that one fast. So you can see I changed it by just clicking on it. So we're going to position 11 fast, then 1 at a moderate speed. And now we want to close the gripper. So CG for close gripper. Now we go back to position 11. GP 11. That should be just above this block. And we're going to do that slower now because we have the block in hand. Now that we've gone straight up, because you never really want to go diagonally. So we go straight up and then straight over. So we've gone to position 11. Now we're going to go to position 22, or sorry, 12. So GP Let's open this window again. GP 12, joint speed 5, GP position 2. So it's going to drop it down, speed of 5. Now we open the gripper. And then we go to position 12 again, slowly. Go to the position above that block, slowly. And then you can rapidly go to back to position 99, the starting position. So we'll go fast there. So let's run this and we'll see what happens. We'll run it once because the block won't be in the same place the second time. So we're running it. It goes down. It picked it up. It's going to position 12. Position 2. Open. Oops. So the motion is too great. An error impact occurred because it actually went lower than I could have gone. So I need to redo position 2. Right now is actually probably a safe place for position two because it barely is touching, but I'm going to hit Z up just a tiny, just a, just a one tiny click. And I'm going to hit two, and I'm going to reteach two. So now we're going to redo this, um, this setup. Oh, it's the one thing I can't remember how to do. Hold on, I'm going to pause you. Just kidding, I knew how to do it. If you click this button here, it says reset work cell, and it will reset it for you. So you can see right now, the gripper starts closed, and I screwed that up. So um, I'm wondering if we can insert a comment into here. Uh, if not, there, there's got to be a way to do it. I'll find that out. So we click open gripper. I'm going to have to start it with the gripper open. Oh, looks like I just clicked it, and it inserted it into there. Well, that is fantastic. Uh, now let's run it, and we'll see if it works at this point. And you can actually turn on a robot path. So if I click that, it will show the path, which is kind of cool. I'm going to need to see that for your final project. And it dropped it down, and now it brings it up. And there we go. So that is a final program. You're going to do this uh, numerous different times, and then copy and paste some of your code and your screenshot of your robot, and we should be good to go. So I think that's all we need to show for this project.